Really, I think the beginning point was at 14, I was raped. Coming up, JC's Girls. Heather Veach, a former Las Vegas stripper, and her friend Lori meet women in the sex industry to share God's love. He thinks he's marrying a stripper, okay? He <laughs> thinks he's marrying a great, crazy, wild girl, and he's really marrying a future Secret. holy roller, Secret. okay? <laughs> yeah, and so I, I'm... Learning that it's never too late to receive God's love. Next. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Betty Robinson, and this is my husband, James. Well, we've got two beautiful girls here, and uh, one of them was a, a stripper. Now, the other one has uh, joined her in uh, incredible outreach to these uh, exotic dancers, and I uh, understand recently, after her parents raised her to be such a sweet <laughs> little church girl, was actually in the uh, newspaper in the Los Angeles area as a former stripper. <laughs> and so that just really blessed the parents big time. But <laughs> this is quite a remarkable journey. And uh, these young ladies have been appearing, of course, on Bill O'Reilly and other places that they, uh, because they really are uh, making an incredible impact in, in an area that a lot of people would not even talk about, especially if they claim to be church people. I want you to welcome to Life Today, Heather Beach and Lori Alby. Would you welcome them? They're from Southern California. We're glad you're here. I, uh, I want to know, because you were the one, let's get this straight, now, since you've already been yeah. in the newspaper, Lori, as a, a former stripper, but that just simply wasn't a part of your life, was no. it? Were you like Betty, kind of an all-American church girl? Oh, yeah. I, w I was raised in a Southern Baptist home mm -hmm. my whole life. Went to every youth camp there was. Well, Baptists are not knowingly ever in strip clubs, so... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I want to ask you, how in the world did you end up going in strip clubs? Because you do go in them now. Well, it actually started out that I cheated on my hairdresser and decided to go to Heather <laughs> to have her do my hair. <laughs> and that's how it started, just sitting in the chair with foil coming out of my head everywhere. <laughs> and Heather um, is sharing with me her heart and her passion for God and how she feels like God wanted her to go back and tell the girls in the clubs about God. And I thought, oh, she wants me to go. <laughs> she wants you to go with her. <laughs> she wanted me to go with her. So she just put this challenge out there. She's like, I want to go back, but I want to take my Christian sisters with me. Mm -hmm. And so you did. Now, I don't want you to tell us because you started this <laughs> about what age? In the I, dance business. I started dancing at 21. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it initially started with go-go dancing. And then it was bikini dancing, and then pasty dancing, then topless, and eventually even to nude dancing. So it was a progression. It wasn't something that I just jumped into. It was um, almost like Satan knew how to take me there one step at a time. And I'd say the world has uh, practiced that strategy quite yes, extensively. Yes. You had a pretty, uh, in some ways, dysfunctional childhood mm, yes. and family. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened that might have brought you to the mm -hmm. point because I wonder why in the world anybody, you mm -hmm. know, you're a pretty girl, why would you mm -hmm. end up doing that? What was the progression that got you going yeah. into the exotic dance or the uh, stripping business? Well, you know, I, I grew up in a home without a father, with a mother that had to work long hours. And um, really, I think the beginning point was at 14, I was raped. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, I think in my life, I just, it changed my view of men. It changed my view of myself. I stopped um, respecting myself in the same way and started just feeling like that was what I was about, that that was my value. You know, sex was what made me good or my looks were what made me good and I had no understanding that I was something else, that I was better than that. So I think that was what really set me down that path is being raped at 14. What impression did you develop concerning men in this yeah. life progression? I, I, I almost just felt like they were out to get me, you know, a lot in a lot of ways. And the only type of um, men, you know, I'd really come in contact with were usually bad men. And so I, I had this view that they were all the same. And I, I always thought, you know, because so many types of men come into the club, but you can see something the same in all of them. So I would start thinking that... What they is were, that same in it's, all of them? It's that part of them that 
can take over and they can do things that you know they don't want to do because of their sex drive. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this thing that controls them. You get them. the impression that a lot of them are there realizing they're out of place and even maybe wishing in some ways they weren't there. It's like they're controlled or pulled in. I definitely think they're lured in, and I think a lot of them are there um, just feeding an addiction. They're looking for pleasure because they're empty, you know, and often now I feel sorry for them looking back on it. I feel so sorry for them because I know they're looking for something and they're trying to fill, fill it with constant pleasure, constant pleasure, but really what they need is God. All right now, what brought about a change? Because obviously you're not doing that anymore. How long have you been out of that business? Six years. Six years. Okay. What happened to you? I, I started being really afraid of the end of the world, believe it or not. It was the millennium time and that was coming up and I started thinking around 1998 as 1999 was approaching and all that Y2K scare started happening. I started actually kind of hearing the buzz and getting worried what if this is true? You know, and realizing somehow I realized that I was going to pay the price for the way I lived. And I did not want to be... Were you thinking there was an eternity? I mean, here yes, you're living for yes, right now, but yes, you're thinking there's an eternity? I was thinking there was an eternity. And I, Where'd I was, you pick up that idea? It, you know, it's funny because you hear it here and there. You know, you, you see a billboard. You see something You weren't watching here. us on television? Yeah, I, 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 I did watch some televangelists <laughs> at different times, and I would pay attention. And those are the ways that it would get in. And unfortunately, it wasn't, you know, Christians that came to me and talked to me because most of them thought I was too evil. Do you I think if one bad. had come with really the right approach, like you're going now, yeah. they might have gotten your attention? I, I think I would have you never You would have been one of them it. they could have I, gotten yeah. to. I think, I think at least I would have never, ever forgotten it, and mm -hmm. I would have turned to it at some point in my life. And that's actually what motivates us, is, is just me realizing if someone had come to my place, to my place of work, and met me right where I'm at, and loved me enough to tell me about God, even though I was in a place they would never think to go in, I would have remembered. I would have remembered and I would have held on to it. And so that's our hope is that we are doing the same thing, that we're planting a seed, that if they get in trouble, if something's going to happen, they will always know that right then and there they can turn to God and that he will forgive them no matter what their circumstance. Because often these girls do not know of God's forgiveness. They know they're sinners. I knew I was a sinner. I knew that. Do you think that. most of the girls that are doing it in their own mind really think this is not really right. Absolutely. But I it's, think a, it's I, a means to an end. They, they, it's a living. Absolutely. And, and they, uh, they become manipulative too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, most of the girls, we, we actually are very close to many girls now. And many of them say, I want out. I don't want to do this. It's also a very bad fin financial trap because now at this point, um, you have no record of employment. Is it very competitive now? To it's very it's competitive, very, mm. very much. So and a lot of them go beyond the dance routine to yeah, other things, right? A lot of right? them do. A lot of them are turning to prostitution um, just to pay the bills. And I think once you cross over a certain point and now you're not taking home any money, you know, even though you might have spent the night taking all of your clothes off on stage and doing all these things and maybe you didn't make the money that you thought and you depended on, now you're going to take it one step further to reach that goal, to get that money. So you said you were thinking about eternity. So yes. what was the next thing that but happened? Then, um, you know, I put myself through beauty school because I really had a, I started talking to God and started telling him, you know, I, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to do this forever. And I started talking to him just in my own way at that time. And I set a goal for um, the millennium. And in September of 1999, I went to go get married because that was part of my goal with God. I did not want to be living with my boyfriend. And I had this secret plan that I kept from everybody to, to give my life fully over to the Lord. And um, I went to go get married in and we took a cruise and we got married in Jamaica. And on the way back, I started telling my husband about Jesus. Well, on the way there, I'm sorry. I started <laughs> telling him, you know, I heard this story about Jesus and, and, you know, I heard he's this and that. And would you want to maybe go to church after we get married? And, and he's like, okay. He thinks he's marrying a stripper. Okay. He <laughs> thinks he's marrying a great, crazy, wild girl. That's good. And he's really marrying a 
future Secret. holy roller, Secret. okay? <laughs> yeah, and so I, I'm like, I tell him, and you know, I, I asked God um, at that time to provide a Christian pastor, and he did. He came through for me, and we had a pastor that took the time to tell us about the importance of Christ in our lives and how our marriage was. Was that Greg Laurie at that time? No, Who was it, it, it was in Jamaica. It was oh, in a, Jamaica. Yes, yeah, some random pastor <laughs> yeah. in Jamaica. You don't know who you're going to get. It could be a Rastafarian. It could be, you know, you don't know. Yeah. And we got we got a Christian pastor, and he really mm. took the time to do it. And, um, you know, after that, it was the first time my husband and I prayed together. And when we came back to America, we came back changed. And we right, we were right. changed. That's what God did. All right. He really, he really changed you in the sense that he now sends you back to the places that, yeah. where you worked and had all these feelings and now you're going back. Okay, what kind yeah. of reception are you getting? You go back, you actually go in and talk to the girls? What do we you tell them? We actually go in. What do uh, you tell them? Get out of here and go to church because <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. go to hell. No, no, nothing like that. No? We, we actually no. let them know that our, our main message is to really let them know there's nothing you've ever done that God would not forgive you for. And when you're ready for him, he's ready for you right now. And just to let them know anytime you can do this, anytime, any place, anywhere, you could call upon God and he's going to be there for you. And, you know, then we ask if we could pray for them. And almost always they say yes. We've yeah, even had amazing. girls so desperate for prayer that the we have a window. You know, we buy time from them. We buy that that private dance. We have a window. So there's times They don't that dance. You just buy the time. We just buy the stuff. time. Yeah. And we just sit. To, and then we're able to sit down with them and, and talk to them. And there's even times that the time is up. And we ask them if we could pray for them. And they run out of time. And they've said, you know what? Hold on. And they take us to the middle of the club with all the customers the other dancers, and they say, will you still pray for me right here? Hmm. So these girls really want prayer. They, they want God, you know, and, and you know what, too? They want to feel loved. And many of them don't feel loved, and that's what we do is we show them that there are people out there that love them despite where they are. Unconditional love is what they're looking is for. Is that what, when you went, that's what you saw, and it caused you to go, here you are, all-American <laughs> church girl, never yeah. would do anything like that. Thought these people were disgusting, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're going in there, and what did you find the love surreal that you just got caught up in it? Well, I was terrified to go in, number one, because I thought that, why would they listen to me? I've not been where they've been. I can't relate. And it, it really is that tool that God gives us of, of love that, that powered me through that moment. But the girl that, that I spoke with literally... When I told her there was nothing she had ever done that God wouldn't forgive her for, she literally broke down in tears. She literally broke down in tears and, um, and just started telling me, you know, I, I've wanted to go to church, but I thought if I walked through the door, I would turn into a pillar of fire. Mm -hmm. And I was like, absolutely not. You know, that's why we're here. We want you to know that you can go and you can go just like you are right now. And so you've been going with Heather for an extended period of time now? Yeah, it was, it was after that first night at the club that we really started thinking about how can we expand this? How can we reach more girls? Because in one night we're reaching maybe four or six girls. Mm -hmm. So we just started thinking we have to do more. And that's when we came up with the idea of the website, going to and the what porn is the convention. Website? It's jcsgirls.com, for jesuschristgirls.com. So what you're doing now, if people want to communicate with you, you're actually willing to help train yes. people in churches and yes. how they approach. Mm -hmm. You're going to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. You're going to keep going. Have you seen positive results? Now, you've been talking to us about some of them being surprised that you love them. You don't walk in and tell them, walk out with me. Right. You go in and show them you love them, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. The way God loves them, you don't approve what they're doing. It's right. obvious. Right. they probably really not approving what's going on, but they're sort of desperate for right. trying to make a way. But you go in there and love them, and then over a period of time, have you seen positive things yes, happen? Absolutely. Have you seen these girls definitely. really change? Yes, like definitely. Like you've been changed. Yeah, definitely. We, we're watching anything from, you know, complete transformation to just baby steps. You know, we just spent um, the evening the other night with uh, dancers are now flooding into our church, by the way. And <laughs> it's so really exciting. It's, it's actually a very beautiful thing. And, and we're able to stand next to them, and we, they start off, you know, clapping and and starting and now we stand next to them as they stretch their hand to the sky and they praise God with mm. no shame. Yeah, they're grabbing no each shame. other's hands. Just they and, and it is the most beautiful thing to watch these women who initially walk into our church in fear, fear of us. Mm -hmm. 
Fear of and judgment. Is love the most powerful force? Love in is. That is love is good. it. Love Absolutely. is it. The, the fact that we really, and I think, you know, they go through testing. They test you really, really harshly. You know, they'll try to offend you. They'll try to hurt you. And when you just continue to love them, no matter what they do, then it all changes later. Mm -hmm. And and that is it. Love is our greatest weapon. And it's it's the only thing we should be using. Church girl. You saw her. <laughs> Church girl. You saw you saw a changed girl and oh, you saw absolutely. a girl so changed that from this, this radical change changed you absolutely. from just being a church girl mm -hmm. to being an expression of life yeah. in very difficult circumstances. And, and would you agree that needs to happen all across the church? People need to absolutely. sort of come out of the walls you know what, and, and get out among the people what and really, love them? What really impacted me was her passion really reminded me of a passion that I had had in my own life such a long time ago, you know, when I really knew I was going to be in full-time ministry someday. And I just, when she started challenging me to go into the clubs, I thought, you know what, when is the last time I had allowed myself to be remotely uncomfortable for God? Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. As a Christian, that's not okay. If we can't remember the last time we reached out we to tell live people so about far God, out of the boat it's not that okay. we're desperate for the Holy Spirit's yeah. enabling. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why what oh, Jesus yeah. called us to do, we can't do without His strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. To be the witnesses He wants us to be, we've got to have His enabling to be bold, to have courage. We've got to have His strength. We've got to have His compassion and His love to do the things God's put mm -hmm. on our heart. Definitely. And I think this is absolutely awesome. You appreciate what God's doing in their lives and through their lives. I think it's tremendous. You all are an answer to prayer. I've prayed for many, many years that God would give us witnesses there. And you said to me, because I asked, should men go in? For many reasons, they should not. Temptation is great. However sincere, if in fact these girls see someone that's sincere, oftentimes soul connections form between yes. them that actually causes the girl not to see God for people to tend to get emotionally involved and it's not necessarily mm -hmm. wise or safe. And that's a tremendous word from mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. Heather. I appreciate you saying it, but here for them to go as girls back in or as a woman in a church, the last person the girls would think they would see there loving us, you know, the church lady, the church girl mm -hmm. loves you, not just mm -hmm. sit at church singing the choir, but loves you. It sounds a whole lot like mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. to me. So mm -hmm. keep doing it. If you want help, the website is there. You can also go on our website, lifetoday.org. We'll tell you more about how you can communicate with them. You're doing a great job. Would you like to say thanks to them and thanks to God for what you're doing? Heather, bless you. Lord, bless you. Keep it up. You're doing great. And by the way, you know, you've got a place to witness. Love people. You don't try to go out and collect a scalp for Jesus and a notch in your gun stock. Hey, go out and love people. Let the light shine through the love that's in your life and it'll begin to change people's lives. Lives. We don't collect them. We love them. Mm -hmm. This is key. That's what we're doing right now in Africa. You're going to see one of the most popular singers in all of Europe, Edward John, who I'm telling you, his, his song, What If, and you'll hear it at the end of the show even today, he went to the mission field for the second time. I want you to watch and listen to him as God moved on his heart because right now we're involved in mission feeding and this is something that's exciting to all of our viewers. Just like you're excited about lives being changed here in some extreme situations, here's an extreme situation where love makes the difference too. Watch closely. They're wearing me out, but this is what we want to see. Healthy kids that love to run, play soccer, and have fun. You guys look great. <laughs> the reason these kids are in pretty good condition is we've been feeding them for a long time. If we took the food out of these programs, you would just see a rapid decline in their the condition and situation. When the children of Africa don't have access to enough food, they could end up here, a malnutrition clinic. The biggest problem with malnutrition is that the body actually starts to shut down. The body doesn't have enough energy because of the malnutrition to, to be able to support the body and so it starts slowly shutting down. But if we can get to them before they reach this point of severe malnutrition, when we first start seeing the signs of that malnutrition, then we have a much better chance. Then we've got an 80 or 90% chance of actually keeping them alive. In an ongoing effort to save children's lives, 
Life Outreach and its mission partners continually search for remote areas that are in desperate need of the Mission Feeding Program. I'm sitting here in a, uh, on a dirt floor in a little hut with a room full of misery. These children need our help so desperately. Young children without food, without help. You look at how thin these children are, you can see the need. It's written all over their faces, all over their bodies. Look into their eyes. Their village doesn't have mission feeding. We've come here, we've seen these children. We've literally had our hearts knitted to their hearts. And yet now we have to leave here without leaving any food behind for them. You don't know how that breaks my heart. Please, I'm asking you, to do whatever you can do today because it's only with your help. It's only through your open hearts, through your giving, through your gift, that we can come back to this village and that we can bring them food. I want to kiss every one of those little children on the cheek. I just think they're beautiful. Precious to God, precious to Isaac, to Edward John, but you can hold them, you can pray for them, you can even weep over them, and then just let them die. Or you can do what the missionaries are asking us to do. And that's when they find a serious situation, conditions unbearable, deplorable, deadly. They say, let's leave a feeding center here. That's up to you. We're willing, we're anxious. Would you help? Would you dial that number where people dial all the time and say, my heart's broken, my heart's heavy, would you pray for me? Nearly 2,000 people call every day all through the year wanting help. Some call to say, I want to help. That's what you can do now. You say, I want to hold those children. I want to enable the missionaries and relief workers to feed them. Right now, we've had a miracle situation that goes beyond the miracle in progress of feeding 375,000 where 30, 50, or $100 will help us feed three, five, or 10 children for six months. We now have a miracle opportunity to take a $3 million food grant, and if we'll guarantee we can deliver it to those areas, the hard hit remote areas, and utilize it, we will receive that grant, but we have to be able to do it. And the missionary said it's going to take an additional $300,000 to have the manpower, the strength, and the ability to disperse all of that, but we're ready to do it. We can do it if we just have the resources to make it happen. That means right now a $300,000 enabling on your part will be multiplied 10 times. That means $1,000 becomes 10,000. 100 becomes 1,000. 30 becomes 300. So we have an opportunity to multiply our gift right now 10 times. I want to ask you, please, help us continue feeding the 375,000. Help us take some of those children into our arms and care for them. Stand with the missionaries. Help us take advantage of the 10 to 1 grant. Would you dial the telephone number, take your bank card, use it like a check. It's a life card. That's what it becomes. You're giving life. Take your bank card. Make the best gift you can. If you can give $100, Please do it. It'll become a thousand. Would you do that? If you want to write a check, make it to life. But call us and tell us what you're putting in the mail, what the check is for. Really important that we hear from all of you. We have some special gifts that we're offering you because we want to bless you continually. You're as important to God and to us as any hungry child. That's why we're here, offering you help, hope, and inspiration. But right now, you're actually giving life and expressing love to these children and their families. Please go to the phone. Don't just sit there and hope someone does it. You be the hope. You be the answer. Thank you for going to the phone. Thank you for your gift. More than 375,000 hungry and malnourished children in Angola, Mozambique, and Sudan are counting on us. And now a miracle opportunity. $3 million in food grants has been offered to us for our feeding and relief efforts in Angola. All we have to do is guarantee we can deliver the food. 
In order to do this, we must raise an additional $300,000 above and beyond our current feeding and outreach commitments. Because of this opportunity, your gift can now have a 10 to 1 impact. $30 to help feed three children can now have a $300 impact. $50 for five children can have a $500 impact. And $100 to help feed 10 children can have a $1,000 impact. With your gift of any amount, you can receive the hardcover edition of Beth Moore's book, Praying God's Word. With your gift of $125 or more to help feed 10 children, be sure to request the beautiful leather-bound version of Praying God's Word. When we begin to understand all that God has made available to us through His Word, the Christian life comes alive. This is what Beth's teachings have done for me and I believe will do for you. Also, please prayerfully consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help feed 100 children, which today will have a $10,000 impact, and you may request the Sharing of the Well Bronze Collectible. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. There's children all over the, the continent that are they're crying out to you. They, they're doing what this child has done today. They're reaching out to you and they're saying, please, I need food and I need it now. The situation is desperate. We need your help immediately. We need you to help today. Don't say, well, maybe I'll do something tomorrow or next week or next month. Next week or next month might be too late. A little boy like this might die next week or next month. I want to ask you, please, the situation is urgent. We need you to act now. You go to the phone right now. You give whatever gift you can give. You give the gift of life. I do thank you. Beth Moore's Praying God's Word will be a blessing. It becomes like a devotional. We have the beautiful special leather-bound version just for Life Outreach for those of you who will help us with a special gift. And we thank you. And I want to say to Heather and Lori, <laughs> to the former stripper and the church girl that got <laughs> labeled a former stripper, but never would have. And you are so changed and so beautiful. Would you like to say thank you again to Heather and the Lord? I do thank you. I'm proud of you. God bless both of you. Pray for Heather's husband. He's fighting a brain tumor right now. He carries a heavy burden now. Pray for her. Pray for her husband. Thank you so much for letting us come in. What if I could love a little deeper? What if I could give a little more? What if I could pray a little longer? Maybe I could touch one more soul. What if I could live and be faithful? What if I could judge no? What if I could love the one who hates me? Maybe I could touch one more soul and maybe... There are some people in our lives that irritate us. Beth Moore and learning to love difficult people tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.